happy Wednesday. If you're watching this, happy whatever day of the week. A lot of you guys aren't aware, but we did a order of 10 sets of these wheels, which we, we quit selling, but we decided to do a set of 10, or a, a, a pallet of 10. And they're coming, most are already sold. There may be one or two available. Again, we probably maybe do this once a year because they really only make about $40 per pair. It's really expensive. And when we get them, when we get these wheels in, pardon, pardon the dirt, but when we get these wheels in, they have a stripe all the way around the wheel. So we have to take a heat gun and peel every single one off and clean them up, uh, of course. So 40 bucks for, you know, and it's probably half an hour's worth of work to 45 minutes worth of work per wheel and then packing everything. It's, it's honestly, it's not worth it. Um, but we do it just because there are a few guys that, uh, that really want them and they're really slick wheels. So we decided to do an order of 10. 10 sets. What we're gonna go over today, since everybody's asking us um, and we don't we don't have the time in this project to go over everybody's individual setup because some guys want to run some guys want to run stock legs some guys want to run NCY legs and and everybody's setup's going to be different so what we're going to go over is kind of the common scenarios what the differences are between these wheels um, and your stock pre bug wheels we're going to talk about the stems that are on these bikes and the differences on the stems. In case you didn't know, these bikes came with two different style stems. It came with two different style legs that had different spacing for the calipers. They came with two different style rotors. So it gets really hairy and it gets really confusing. So this is an opportunity to kind of break this all down. We don't do big brake kits for pre-bugs anymore because it, it got to be so much work and it's so convoluted where we may sell two kits a year, but when we sell a kit, it, it may be two hours worth of work back and forth in emails to try to get the customer, find out what they have, what they're going for, and all that. It just, it's totally not worth it on these bikes. That's why I just go to the whole setup with the NCY myself. It, it, it's, you're getting brand new forks, you're getting brand new brakes, and, and all brand new components. Not everybody wants to do that, and that's what we're gonna go over today. But anyways, this is my setup, and we'll get it up on the lift and kind of break it down for you. So as we said earlier, we kind of showed you guys my personal bike. We've got the 12 inch wheels on here, like I explained earlier. All got a nice, nice fresh clean on these guys here. Um, we're gonna go over what, what I had done on this bike. My bike from the factory came with the 26 millimeter forks and there's two different sizes of forks on these bikes. Two different sizes of forks come on these bikes and two different stems because obviously they have to match the forks. I had the 26 millimeter stem on this bike so what I have here, these leg shims here are gonna slide up into your tree and they're gonna allow the NCY fork to fit inside your tree. These work for bug eye as well. This is what I run on my bike to accept the NCY legs. Everything from there on down, other than the wheel, is basically Honda Dio, Honda Ruckus style stuff. So I've got the NCY low down forks on mine. If you guys run the standard height, they are a little bit taller. It depends on what you want. Um, I've done tons and tons of wheelies on these things. I've come down hard. I've jumped stuff with them. I've never had them leak, never had any issues. They've been really, really solid forks. So if you decide to go this route, you decide to do these forks, I would suggest just doing the whole entire thing at once with fresh stuff. It's all gonna work right. It's all gonna fit good. And you get all new components because you're dealing with forks that are that are old. So on the pre-bugs, they came with two different style triple trees. So you got a 26 millimeter triple tree, and that's this diameter right here and the inside diameter of your tree. And you, got a, and you also got a 30 millimeter triple tree. So depending on what size tree you have on your bike, you need to measure to see what's gonna work. If you have the 26 millimeter tree, these forks will slide right into your bike and you don't need any adapters. If you have the 30 millimeter tree, which is this guy, if you have the 30 millimeter tree and you have the wider legs, our drop-in legs will bolt right in. 
that's where these guys come in. I run the 30 millimeter, I run the 30 millimeter tree with the 26 millimeter forks, and that's where these guys come in play. Again, this is not what you have to do. This is not what's required. But if you want the best, nice stuff, you want all fresh and new, this is what you're gonna do. So now you have the information to find out what triple tree you have. If you have the 26s, 26 triple tree, you can run NCYs and bolt right in. If you have the larger 30, you need to get the adapters to run the NCY legs. These legs we sell also will bolt right into a 30, and these are basically an OEM, um, these are an OEM direct replacement fork as well. One thing I wanna explain on these, these forks, the 30, 30 millimeter, when I say 30 millimeter, that's this diameter here. The spacing, this direction, is different between the 26 and 30. So that's why we don't do the big brake kits anymore because there's too many variations on, on the spacing and the, the different rotors. I believe on the pre-bugs there was a four bolt, a three bolt, and they may have been possibly two three bolts, I'm not sure. But there's two if not three different style rotors on the pre-bug. Um, so let's continue going over this setup here. What I have, Paul, come on in. What I have on this side, we run our scooter swap shot billet spacers or billet sliders, not required by any means, but they're great. And then what we do is we've got a, um, so this is all 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter NCY forks. You take this spacer here, these are our 12 millimeter scooter swap shop spacers, which can be cut to size, this guy here. So it's a billet spacer. If you call us ahead of time, we can actually cut this to the exact size that you want. Um, but you need to get your wheel centered and measure up to tell us what you need. But you, one spacer is enough to do one side and then the other as well. This is gonna be required, at least one is gonna be required because if you're cutting it with your mom's hacksaw and you're grinding it down on concrete, you're probably gonna need to do this a couple times. So do it once, do it right, make sure it's straight and true. Um, but this is what's gonna center your wheel up in between your forks. So whether you have your stock forks or whether you have your NCYs, whatever you're running, your Alibaba forks, um, well, they're probably gonna break anyway, so you don't need to do it perfect, but um, this is what's gonna center up your wheel. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the other side, Paul. Let's just get in here. So what I have on this bike is I have the NCY. This is a DO style rotor. Your rotor on your three bolt pre-bug will not fit on these wheels. I have an NCY DO style rotor. This is available on a 190, a 200, 220. They're available in a few different sizes. I run the 220 on my bike. This is a standard Frando style caliper that you'd see on a, a Ruckus or whatnot. As you can see, I've got lots of room here, which is really nice. You can take this caliper off without, a lot of times you have to unbolt the wheel, unbolt the rotor to get the caliper off. There's tons of room on this guy, which is really nice. So um, this is standard Frando style caliper. And then this is a, the caliper adapter for that. Um, these forks are nice because these forks are gonna allow you to run um, basically any brake setup, any ruckus brake setup, Brembo, you can run Adeline stuff, you can run NCY, anything. So that's why this is really nice, it's really universal. I've got a spacer on this side as well to center the wheel up. And then I've got my NCY rotor bolts, and of course all the stuff, all the stuff we sell of course. Um, but this is, this is, this is my setup. It's, it, it works extremely well. It breaks really good. Um, never had any issues with it. It has nice dampening, comes down good from wheelies and uh, handles great. So if you want to do the best stuff and you want to go new and fresh, this is, this is kind of what I would suggest. Obviously you don't have to do this exact setup. You can go with a 200 and a 200 rotor. You can change your color up. Obviously we've got different colors. You've got different color calipers, rotors. Um, and then adapter, of course, it's gonna be this guy here. You need to make sure if you're running a 200 millimeter rotor or a 220, this adapter has to match this rotor and the caliper. So if you run the NCY, which is what I would suggest for most people, this NCY is gonna go with the NCY 220 caliper adapter. So these three all need to fit together. They need to be the proper products to go together. As you can see, this caliper is not gonna bolt to this adapter. That's why you need the specific NCY adapter to make this caliper work with this fork. Also, not required, we have the um, NCY 12 millimeter axle as well. Just make sure if you're using an axle from something else, um, make sure that it's long enough, make sure you have enough threads, make sure it fits good. Um, so, this is, so this is my setup, you guys kind of have a, an idea of, of um, what's required, the pros and cons, it's expensive, but again, you're getting all new products, you're getting all new good products, and you have the 
options for gold, blue, red, yellow, whatever. I mean, you could have unicorns cut into your rotor. There's tons and tons of options for, for these wheels um, in, in this fork setup. Here comes Paul, I'm gonna scare him. Paul! <laughs> Woo! What you got there, Paul? Saran wrap. Woo, two rolls? You gonna get all saran wrappy with it? Yeah, all right. You gonna wrap Carter? Yeah. Gross. If you wanna do something like this, minus the cost of the wheels, I'm gonna guesstimate you're gonna be in the realm of 200, 250, 350, about 450, 500 bucks to do all this stuff, which is about what you spend on a ruckus setup, a Dio setup, whatever. It's all the same stuff. So that's that's my setup. Um, let's go over the scenario. Let's say you have stock forks and you want to use your stock caliper and you want to use your stock rotor. Um, you're going to have to get creative, okay? You're going to have to drill things out. You're going to have to um, just get in there and do it because every application is going to be a little bit different. The most important thing is on your stock wheels, or I'm sorry, on your stock forks here. Maybe. Gosh, we pack things so well around here. We use the sticky, sticky stuff here, maybe. All right. So on your stock forks, this hole here for your axle is 10 millimeter. If you run these wheels, you need these wheels are 12 millimeter when i say 12 millimeter this hole needs to go open needs to open up two millimeters more so what you need to do is get the right size drill bit and drill this thing out centered don't drill it crooked drill it centered or take it to a machine shop if you don't trust yourself you want to get it you want to get a um what i would do is take your axle in and and uh measure exactly what you have and then you want to get a drill bit just a hair bigger but but do your research and don't drill it too big but you can drill this out to a 12. Um, 12 millimeter that way your axle slides through once you've drilled out your forks and again this is this is if you want to run these forks you just want to put in fresh forks um, these are a good option for you still have to drill them out if you want to do these on your bike when you're buying the wheels I don't mind drilling them out for you guys just just ask um, message us beforehand um, so if you want to use your stock forks you guys can do that you need to drill them out now depending on the forks that you that you have because the distance is gonna be different on your rotor. What you need to do is take your stock rotor. You need to measure your stock rotor, find out the millimeter that it is. And then you need to find a rotor that fits a Honda Dio that's going to be the same millimeter. If you can do that, if you can find that rotor that fits, that's the same size as your stock pre-bug, then you know that this diameter is gonna be right. So center your wheel up. Get your axle in first, drill out your forks, get it centered, and then you're gonna put your rotor on, but your rotor may need to go this way or this way, one way or another, depending on the offset, because the offset's gonna be different on this wheel than the other one. So what you may have to do on these bolts is you may have to, you may have to cut some spacers. And again, if you do that, I would honestly probably stack washers if you don't wanna spend the money and have some spacers cut and made. Again, this is something we can do for you guys if you know your measurement beforehand, we're not gonna be able to give you this number because we don't know what you're running. We can do this if you let us know, we can cut you spacers for these, but you need to give us the exact millimeter thickness between this rotor and this wheel to get, you want this rotor centered inside this caliper. So a couple things you're working with here. It's really easy to center the wheel up because you just cut your spacers to match. Once you get your rotor on and you know the rotor's the same size as your factory rotor, it's Honda Dio, all you've got to do is center it up this way, bolt everything together, and you're golden. Um, there's two different, two or three, I can't recall, style um, pre bug rotors. I know there's two for a fact. One has a four bolt, one has a three. Hey, Carter, did they make two different style three bolt rotors for pre bugs? Or was there's it just. Two different styles. Of, there's of, a two and. Uh, you can fours. zoom in on him. No, there's two different styles of fours. Two different styles of fours, and then one three two different styles of forks because remember there's the one that offsets yeah. it higher and the one that offsets it lower. But what about the rotors? I think the rotors are either three or four. They're the same on okay. th th all the threes are the smaller, smaller one and all the fours are, I think they're like 190 okay. or something like that. Okay, so four, so if you were, if you had the four, 190 is a standard Dio size. So you could run a 190 Dio rotor. But they make them in four? No, but it would bolt on this wheel oh, sure. three. Oh sure, yeah, 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 totally. Okay. As far as clearance and everything. Yeah, yeah. okay, so Carter, it gets Brought really confusing point. and that's why we don't really sell those big, the big brake it. kits anymore because yeah. I think, yeah, there's there's three different disc forks 
there's there's the four bolt one. Well, I think we determined there's two disc forks. Well, there's think. three because remember there's so there's the skinny tube and the big tube, but then on one of them there's also the one that offsets higher and lower on two of those. So there's actually three different forks. All right. It's, That's it's, why we're not doing individual. <laughs> I, I have I sold eight sets of these and I'm getting eight emails or eight messages from eight different people saying I want this I want that I'm like I gotta oh, make a sure video to is. explain it because yeah. you just have to start getting in here and you just have to do it if you're not willing to take measurements and do spacers or whatever this is not the option for you because it's gonna be a little bit of work. That's why I like doing the NCY stuff because once you get them in they all bolt together and it just works. It'd be cool to have those kits NCY. The, the correct spacer for one of them, NCY didn't even know what it was. Remember mm -hmm. what Adam was saying? And we got it and we're like, what is this? And he's like, oh, I don't even know where those came from. I thought I just sent those to you for this bike or yeah. whatever. So yeah, not, not worth not it. Not fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so as Carter said, if your wheel has, if you have the factory four bolt, what you can do again is verify the measurement. Cause I believe 190 is a stock DO size, DO size rotor. So if yours is a 190, you need to get an OEM. I think they're just OEM from the factory. Honda Dio Rotors 180 or 190. So it's a three bolt. Again, this bolt pattern here is Honda Dio. So if you run this wheel, you can buy a 190 millimeter Honda Dio rotor and run it and run it on your stock setup. You're still gonna have to space it one way or another to get it centered inside your caliper. Um, so that's if you want to run your stock forks, stock caliper, and whatnot. If you're trying to run your stock forks and you want to do some, uh, if you want to do your stock forks and you want to run a big brake kit 220, I don't even think there's really a good option for spacers to be honest. There is if you have the one <laughs> offset, but it's, it's how you're gonna tell exactly how you yeah. tell what offset you have exactly. And then since you can NCY doesn't really since the, the adapter is not made for obviously pre bug, it's yeah. made for a different bike like a Taiwanese bike and. They don't even know which ones they get anymore. So the ones we order, it's a crapshoot whether you get the. the I think we got one. Didn't have part numbers. On exactly. It yeah, with yeah. blank. So. So, there you have it. Um, Carter explained it in another way as well. You're gonna do this on your stock forks. I would suggest probably just leaving your brakes stock or plan on keeping them stock um, versus trying to do a big brake kit, big caliper, all that stuff. You could try that, but but we're not gonna ship parts back and forth. We did that once before, and I think we ship. We, we shipped things back, free parts $200 or worth of free parts back and forth and back and forth to get it to work right. I think he eventually did, but we're not gonna, we're not doing that anymore. So this is our advice for putting this together just because it's so time consuming. We make like 40 bucks a set of wheels um, and we spend probably half an hour peeling the red tape off and packing them. Um, so we just honestly don't have the time to invest two, three hours into each wheel set trying to figure this out. So hopefully this helps. If you guys have questions in the, um, in the uh, YouTube comments or down below, post up. Um, I'll just go ahead and answer some of those questions. Uh, no, they don't fit spree. They don't fit your tau tau. Uh, well, they may fit your tau tau. You can make okay. You can make anything, anything fit everything. Anything fit anything if you have enough money and you have the fabrication capabilities. These do not fit bug eye. We do have bug eye wheels, which is 02 to 11, but these do not fit bug eye. They do not fit jog. They do not fit vino. These are specific for pre bug. You guys kind of have an idea on the front. This is the, uh, if you like new wheelies, this is the uh, uh, wheelie headlight, which actually they don't make any more trail tech, which is a bummer because these are great lights. But when you're vertical, this thing shines on the ground so you can see where you're going. Um, and also in case you run into rodents or mice or you want to dodge like a turtle or, or a squirrel or something. So uh, Frogs? Frogs? I don't care about frogs. Um, Paul cares about frogs. I like frogs, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, all right, so let's come around this way. Follow me, Paul. This video is not brought to you by Dutch Brothers. Could be. Dutch Bros is what's giving me my energy right now. Um, so come around the back side here. The rear wheel is 100% bolt on. And the way you change your wheel is you take your exhaust off, you take the nut off, and you pull the wheel off. That's all that you Might have, have to do. loosen the brakes too. Oh yes, well. Potentially. Potentially I can loosen the brakes. But um, again, if you're gonna struggle with taking your back wheel off, they're probably not this for you. This is not the wheel option for you. Um, and, this, and if you get in here too, you guys can see this is the Pliny torsion arm. It doesn't, the wheel isn't affected, nothing rubs. And people say all the time, oh, you can't run different pipes on torsion arms. Well, now you see it. Yasuni, torsion arm, bolts right up, a couple little adjustments to the bracket. But as you can see, the tire clearance here is fine. Doesn't change the offset, it's still centered. Um, and again, the biggest thing with these tires is your tire options are huge. We showed you guys the, the blocky 
uh, blocky tires over here if you want to run those. Um, we've got uh, street tires, slicks, anything like that. Um, so there you have it. Can you think of anything else, Paul, as far as breaking down? Uh, well, they're better than 13s. Oh, yeah, good point. There are 13s floating around for these bikes. They're really heavy. Um, you can use them, they're really heavy. It looks like a donk, which if you're into donks, that's cool. <laughs> they're it, super wide they're too. They're super wide. It looks really bad, it's really heavy. Um, I ran- Not good for wheelies. Not good for wheelies. I ran heavy bike, I read heavy wheels, ran heavy wheels on one of my bikes, and it was this weird, almost like ghost ride effect where you could feel the weight of the wheel. Um, so lighter wheels are obviously gonna be, um, they're gonna be better, they're gonna ride better, it's less unsprung weight. Um, tire options. Uh, tire options, yes. 13 is terrible for tire options. Um, you really don't have like many options. Yeah, very, very slim. So if you're gonna run wheels, I would suggest running the 12s. Um, yeah. They're- To so make 12s for everything. Yeah, they make 12s for everything. It's the most common tire size. So the, It's Grom make, size. Yeah, Grom size. So anything Grom runs, you guys can run as well. Really nice tires, tons of options. Typically the tires aren't really any more expensive, but um, you know, you have different tires, different profiles, slicks, whatever. So hopefully it gives you guys some insight on kind of what this is, what they fit, um, what it is, what they fit, and what's required. So stock forks, uh, we're not gonna help you, I hate to say it, but we're not gonna help you go through the entire process of doing this as a purpose of this video. Um, because it just takes way, way, way too much time. That's why we don't do it anymore. Stock forks, you're gonna get creative. You're gonna need a drill bit. Any way you slice it with these wheels, people are gonna want refunds now for seeing this video. <laughs> no wheels. <laughs> um, any way you slice it, you do need a 12 millimeter spacer. If you guys wanna do this stuff, this setup, we're happy to do it. But the only way to really make this work right just is to measure to everything top to bottom. And you also need to give us the measurement on this here as well. I need this measurement on your fork to tell you what's gonna work and what's not gonna work. We do sell stems, we do sell the 30 millimeter stems. Um, so, If you have a no, drum pre-bug and you wanna swap, yeah. you could just buy the yep. stem, the shims, the forks, yep. axle, everything. Paul made a good point. If you guys have a drum pre-bug, still bolts on the back. If you have a drum, obviously you have to change your master cylinder. You're gonna have to change your stem and then all this is gonna be new as well. So if you have a drum to swap over. It's a little more. Again, not counting the wheels, it's about six seven hundred bucks if you want all brand new stuff now you can go out and buy the used parts but almost every set of stock uh pre-bug forks i've seen blown seals are leaky they have blown seals and we've tried to find seals and they're pretty much impossible to yep. find um so again a little bit more money uh you don't have to run nc wise but if you're gonna stun it you're gonna wheel it you're gonna do whatever i suggest running a good fork and obviously these have been proven because you can see they're dry, they're clean, and this thing has been used and abused. It's been strapped down, hauled 5,000 miles across the country. This thing has probably been 15,000 miles just in, in a trailer with vibration back and forth strapped down, and they're they are perfect, they're tight, they work good. Yep. Um, that's it, you guys have questions, post up down below in the, in, in the comments. Um, this is not pertaining or, or this is, doesn't apply to other bikes, this is just applying for the pre-bug just applying for the wheels that we have. If you guys have other wheels, um, Keisler wheels, 13s or whatever, uh, this, this information does not apply because it's, it's, it's a totally different, different wheel, bolt pattern, everything's, it's a different wheel completely. Um, so if you have different wheels, you're trying to fit them on pre box you need to contact the supplier you're getting them from for specific details um, on that. But Buy the right stuff the first time. Buy the right stuff the first time, do it right. When people call us and they say, hey, we do it all the time. People call us and say, I want the stem, I want everything, I want a whole front end package. What we do is we take the stem, we go over there, we put it up in the vise, obviously not the threaded part, in the middle. And we'll take your wheel, we'll take your tire, rotor, you buy all the parts. We will literally put the entire setup together. We will cut these down, we'll machine these, we'll bolt the entire setup together top to bottom, bolt it, check clear to spin it, take it all back apart, put it in a box, ship it to you, you take it, put it together. There's no other shop that I know of for scooters, mopeds, whatever, um, there's some probably for ruckuses, maybe groms, but for this stuff, there's no other shop that will do that. We will do that. It's probably about an hour's worth of labor, so you're talking maybe um, 100, 100 bucks or something to do that whole setup if you buy all the parts and, and we do it. Um, that would take the normal person, I mean, it could take a few hours to do something like that. Cutting this down, we have a lathe, we can cut these down, drill press, whatever, we can cut custom brackets. So that's a valuable option if you end up wanting to do this and you don't want to fiddle with that. If you guys have any questions, post up below. Again, 
These wheels may or may not be sold out by the time this video um, is up. I got to check. I sold another set last night. I think I may have one set yeah, left. Um, they go quick. These do not sell very well. They, this batch sold good because I didn't buy any for a year. They're about 300 bucks shipped and I make $40 a set. So it's not really cost effective for us to bring these in. We have to bring them in by the pallet. It's about 500 bucks just in shipping to bring in um, 10 pairs. So if you want these, get on it. Um, if you're watching this video and you want wheels and they're not in stock, maybe hop on Facebook, go into the, we have a, a pre-bug performance group and start a group buy. Somebody did that the other day. They started a group buy. I said, hey guys, I want some wheels. And mm -hmm. he put together a list and we got 10 buyers in, ordered 10 and they're on their way to us right now. So 10 wheels are pretty much what we need to kind of even make this worth it to do this. So if you want to set, get some buddies together. Again, 300 bucks ship for the wheels to your door. If you want to set, get some buddies together, find some people. Um, put together a small deal or get a hold of me or post it on Facebook. I will not order one set because it's, it's I would literally be, be it'd probably be cheap for me to hand you $25 and just give you cash and it would be for me to buy a one set, ship it, ship it to you because they're just, they're they're stroking me on them. So we don't really have a whole lot of room. But Paul, anything else you can think of? Not really. Nothing? Could sell tires with the wheels too if Good they need point. them. Good point. You guys want tires? You want Michelins or you want Navis or whatever? Yeah, any tire you want, if you guys um, want to have them put on. Hey, Carter, we're 25 bucks a tire, right? Yep. 25 bucks a tire to mount, 25 bucks to mount a tire. Um, get you some valves. Um, Look, this is the other cool thing about those wheels. Oh, I know we show those. those yeah, yeah, those are <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so we can mount tires for you guys if you want as well. It's probably going to take shipping. It's going to be up a little bit more because the size is quite a bit bigger. It's probably about, I don't know, 10, 12 pounds heavier with tires. Um, yep. But it, you, you beat pick. you beat trying to fiddle them on yourself and then yeah, exactly. pop the bead on. So to mount tires, if you bought the wheels from us, it's 25 bucks in mounting per wheel plus the cost of tire, depending on what you want to do. Uh, the Michelins are, what are these, like 65 bucks a piece or something? I think they're like about 80 bucks. 80 bucks a piece, yeah. yeah. So these are about 80 bucks a piece, but these are really, really, really good tires. You can get something cheaper if you want, yeah. um, but this is this is what we like. So you guys have any questions? This could be a Durka Durka. No. If you guys have any questions, post below. Thanks for watching. I gotta answer this.